Hi, this is Chris Poor from Assured Information Security, and in this video, I'll be going over these hardware buttons on the top, and uh, this automation tab, and this TSI tab, which stands for Target Signal Identification. So, Fissure is comprised of different Python programs running at the same time. You'll see the dashboard going, this hypervisor target signal identification, protocol discovery, and a flow graph executor. So they're all communicating to each other over a network, and you'll see some of those messages going on uh, in the terminal in the background. And for some of those programs, they have different types of functionality that you may want to designate particular pieces of hardware to. So. Uh, you may want a radio connected to your computer or your network to do target signal identification. Maybe you want a different radio to do protocol discovery or attacks or look at IQ data or run archive files. So that's the idea be behind these hardware buttons. You click them and you select different pieces of hardware that you may have plugged into your computer and you can guess what's connected and it will automatically populate the serial numbers. So if you want to apply it just to one component or maybe you want to apply it to all of them, the serial numbers help identify in the flow graphs which radio you want to do which, which feature. So if you had uh, one radio doing protocol discovery you can just apply it to that one piece of functionality. That's the idea behind it. Uh, there's this probe button, which will run a probe command for whatever piece of hardware you got. This is a UHD USRP probe. And if you have a USRP plugged in, it may take a minute to load the firmware as part of this command. So just, just wait for it to load. First time you plug it in, it'll do that, and you run this command. But you can find more information about what's plugged in your computer, and it's kind of helpful for things like uh, X310s, where they got IP addresses and serial numbers, and different daughter boards. It'll guess the daughter board if you have it connected. But if you have two of them, you may have to go in and choose which one you want. It's kind of hard for me to know which one of the two you might be using. I, I could do maybe detect two different things in the future, but still you got to kind of designate which one you want to use at any particular time. It also works for uh, Wi-Fi adapters. Like if I have uh, one plugged in my computer, if you hit guess more than once, it'll just cycle through. Them. It's the same with more than one piece of hardware. I think it, it'll just cycle through all of them. And this is the current list so far. Uh, to certain degrees. But let's just work with the B210 for now. So that's the idea behind the hardware buttons. This automation tab, uh, it's, it's fixed at manual for now. But the idea is you click this start button and it will kick off fissure in whatever mode you have selected and it's a good way to just get everything going at once when automation is selected so the idea behind having a discovery button is you go into an environment and you would kind of just figure out what signals are, are out there uh, scan all types of frequencies just pick up as much information as you can once you found something, move on to the next thing. Uh, target, you would specify a specific protocol or device or emitter or uh, a frequency maybe or something above a certain power level. That's kind of the idea behind target. You would uh, click this button and choose different settings to target. 
And then custom is just a combination of whatever is available. Right now, everything's manual. So there's not much to think about in this tab. Uh, this TSI tab stands for Target Signal Identification. And the idea behind this tab is that you would detect signals, uh, condition them from long streams of IQ data into individual files, pull out the features from those files, and then classify based classify protocols and emitters based on those features using uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning techniques. So without demodulating the signal, this is all happening. So you just look at the, the spectrum and not going into the bits. But as you can see, some of these features are under construction. I actually have them the basics for them mostly done i just got to put them in here but uh, the idea the idea behind the conditioner is you get one big stream of iq data either from a radio or from files and then you do different techniques to isolate signals from one big file so maybe you want to do energy detection or look at eigenvalues or do a match filter to target a specific signal or cyclo stationary feature detection or something like that. So the idea is you just select the Python program that will, that will do that specific technique and you adjust the settings, click start, it'll go through a file or a batch of files and just spit out individual signals in smaller files and you pass that on to the feature extractor which would go into those individual files or the individual signal bursts just signal and just isolated signals and it will pull out whatever features you check depending on maybe a certain classification algorithm you want to run or technique so it will choose whatever one's best match that technique you want to do for classification, spit it out on the table, pass it on to the classifier, which uses that to do the technique, working against train data and so forth. So what do we got so far? Uh, we have a simple sweep, which I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you, it's not very useful if you don't have fast scanning hardware. So what you can do is set up multiple search bands. You can type them in here, click add band. You can remove it. You can also just click in the GUI and hit add band and we'll add new ones. And the idea behind it is that it'll go through the first search band. It will slowly scan. It'll do steps of whatever you specify and it'll dwell for so many seconds. Uh, there are advanced settings, so if you want to change the sample rate for your radio, FFT size, it does like a basic threshold energy detector. Uh, choose whatever channels for your radio, whatever that threshold value is. Excuse me. Um, yeah, so you hit start. It will run a flow graph and you can change these values and click update and it'll kick it off. And as it detects signals, they'll show up here. It's going through the Wi-Fi bands, but if I didn't have these huge bands here, which I'll get rid of right now. So if I wanna get rid of this band and this band, start it back up. Click update. You will see this this yellow slide across the band doing a search based on your dwell time. So every three seconds, one, two, three, switches over. It'll tell you where it's at. And any signals it sees, it'll pop 
pop up there. It's not super accurate because it depends on your bandwidth settings. So if I have like Wi-Fi going with only 10 megahertz, I'm looking at it, it's gonna you know show up anywhere in that 10 megahertz. But the idea is to report back power, frequency, and time to the GUI, which will get passed on to that conditioner to target specific frequencies. Not super useful. I'm not gonna lie. That's it's just too slow. Uh, this I uh, introduced more recently. There is a. Uh, this is a fixed detector. So, I mean, this is a simulator. I'll, just, I'll launch this before going into one with the hardware. And what you're going to see is, that in the simulator, you have a signal that you can control the gain and the amp, the gain and the frequency. And you can also adjust these lines here. And anything within those lines will be detected and spit out to fissure if it's below this threshold, this black line here that I'm adjusting right now. So as I slide the signal into that frequency space, I will start to see new messages coming in. Uh, you can adjust the frequency here. So if I move it up, slide it back. There it is. And there they are. And uh, if I move it around, the frequency will change a little bit. You can change the gain up. It'll change colors. That's the idea behind this. So if you had a radio going, you could change the sample rate, the antennas, the gain, the frequencies. Let's let's run that now. Let's try it out. You can close that, hit stop. So if I have a B two ten going. And these settings will go right. Hit start. And uh, I have a, a little remote here that works at 311 megahertz. Let's go down there. Yeah, right. So if I adjust. Yeah. And I click that remote, there's my signal. I can lower the threshold down. I can ignore whatever is going on here. There's some kind of spike just always there. Now when I click the button on my remote here, it'll start picking up signals from there and sending them to fissure. controls a switch so that was a switch turning on and off and that's the idea behind it um, this is this is a little better than the sweep because you can kind of ignore things you don't want to see and you can fine-tune and it gives you pretty accurate results of where it's at depending on how you got your sample rate set up that's the idea behind this TSI tab. As I develop these other components, I'll swap out this video to talk more about them, how to use those components. But uh, I don't expect people to use this very much because it's designed to kind of all work together to do signal protocol identification, emitter identification, and it's not quite there yet, but it'll get there. And you can blacklist certain frequencies, not have them show up for the other components. That's the idea behind them. You can also search the frequencies right now. So if I have something selected and I hit search, it'll take me to a different tab and it'll automatically populate that frequency and I could search my feature library for what that might be. We'll get into this in other, in other videos, so let's not worry about that. And that's all I got for this tab. Uh, well, it, it, since these things don't do very much on their own, what I would typically do to just detect a signal is open up something like 
Q Spectrum Analyzer with a Hacker F. So if I look at that same frequency area as my remote, I click the button on my remote, and there's the signal showing up on the left there. Over here. So this is, you know, the best way to get an idea of what's going on. If you have control over it, it's even better over the signal. But the nice thing about the hacker of sweep is you can change the frequencies and you can cover a large amount of time in one session. So there's there's a sweep in the whole six gigahertz. You might not be able to see what's going on as much. So if I press the button, you may not see my signal at 310 as easily, but well, you can lower it. Even then, it's hard to see. Yeah, it's over there, way over here. But there's all this other cellular stuff going on. And <laughs> so that's what you would, what I would normally do to just see what's going on in the environment if it's quiet. All right, that's uh, that's it for this video. We'll go into some of the other ones in the other videos.